back to my van build. Keeping on the theme of van electrics, in this video, we're gonna talk about power distribution. We'll talk about battery power, and we'll have a chat about the equipment that I'm using to run my van, so the power distribution equipment, if you like. I'll get it all mounted, then we'll have a talk through it. In the intro, you watched me build my framework from a battery to house these bad boys. They still need to be strapped down and secured as yet, but I've got them sat in with plenty of air around them, loads of room for them to breathe. And I also got the, the 230 volt mains hookup drilled into the side of the van. Now there's about a million videos on YouTube of people putting those in, so I couldn't really see the point in doing a video myself. Uh, Neil, the Urban Explorer, did a good video a few days ago or a few weeks ago, so go and check his video out. I'll put a link to his video in the description below this, so if you want to see how to do that, then he has a really good tutorial on it. I'll crack this video on with talking about battery power, shall we? And the system I'm using is a VRLA 480 amp hour setup. Now, when cho choosing the, the right battery system for you, there's lots to consider. The first thing is type of battery. There's three main types. The first one is lithium battery technology, which by far is the best technology out there. It's almost 100% efficient. It's, they're completely sealed cells and they're completely maintenance free. But downside, they are about 10 times more expensive than the setup I've got, the VRLA setup. Um, the next best thing is the uh, absorbent glass matte batteries, which again, fully sealed, maintenance free. They're about 50, 60% efficient. So again, a really great battery. They, they're mainly used in things like all-terrain vehicles, like uh, quad bikes, uh, jet skis, things like that, because they're, they're fine for rolling over and messing around with. To be honest, I probably would have bought AGMs myself, but at the time I couldn't find any at a good price, but now I have, so I'll put a link to those in the description below if you want to check those out. And the next one is valve regulated lead acid, VRLAs, or also known as wet or flooded cells. Now the VRLAs have come a long way. You used to be able to keep them top up topped up and maintain them regularly. But nowadays they're completely sealed, maintenance free and absolutely brilliant. I went for VRLAs because they're a good value for money and they're, they're probably the most commonly used battery out there. They're, they've been around for years, so I went for old fashioned technology because it seems to work. And if one of these goes down, they're so cheap to replace. Now I did my research and these super bats came at the top of most of the reviews I looked at. So that's why I went for the super bats. When you're buying your batteries, if you go for the AGMs or the VRLAs, you need to buy deep cycle batteries. Now deep cycle means you can run them down to as low as 50% of the total capacity. I, when I say 50%, I don't mean six volts. I mean, they can go down to about 12.4 volts, but you can discharge them over a long period of time, or they can be discharged over a long period of time. Not like a car starting battery where it's discharged heavily, instantly, and then instantly recharged. You can run these for quite a long period of time before they need to be recharged. That's the biggest thing about laser batteries. Now, the next thing to consider is amp hours. It's probably a minefield out there to work out what size battery you need in amp hours. Now, how you work out what size battery you need uh, depends on a few things, on what you're using to power the batteries or what the batteries are powering and how long you wanna be off grid for. How to work out the, the correct amp hours that you need, the first thing to do is to work out the power consumption of all your equipment in your van. Each piece of equipment that uses electricity will have a kilowatt rate or a kilowatt, a watt rating, a power consumption rating. It'll always be in wattage or occasionally it's in amps, but you need to be able to convert it to amps. So how you do that is you divide the watts by the system voltage, which in this case is 12 volts. So for example, let's say 30 watts divided by 12 is 2.5 amps. So that's your amps. You convert all your power consuming equipment from watts to amps. Then you need to work out how long you use each piece of equipment for between each cycle. So before the batteries need recharging. So for example, let's say lights. So my lights, as I said in the last vlog, I've got 10 three watt LED lamps. Uh, that's 30 watts divided up by 12. The voltage is 2.5 amps. And let's say I want to use those for five hours between cycles. I might use it for more, I might use it for less, but we'll go for five hours. What's that? 12 and a half amp hours. So I've got 12 and a half amp hours in my lights alone. You can apply the same principle to your fridge, your water pump, your diesel heater, whatever it is, apply the same principle. So then what you want to do is get all your amp hours that you've worked out. So your, your power consumption by the amount of hours that you're using it or your current by the amount of hours you're using it. You want to add those all up and then times them by about 20% add about 20% onto them just to give you a bit of a safety margin. Then that gives you your total amp hours between cycles. So when I worked out my van, 
it worked out at about 35 40 amp hours so i've got a 480 amp hour system 480 amp hours divided by let's say 40 amp hours that gives me about two weeks off grid if i use everything to the calculations lights five hours a day blah 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 that'll give me about two weeks of complete off-grid energy while I'm recharge, while before I have to go for a recharge. But obviously I have a solar panels on the roof and I have the split charge relay. So it should, in theory, regulate itself and go on a lot longer than that. You need to consider all this when you're coming up with your own van build. If you're only gonna plug, if you're only gonna drive to a campsite and plug straight in, then you can probably go for a system that's quarter the size of my system. So that's where I got my logic from, by using a nice big system, because I wanna go away for weeks and be off-grid for as long as I can before having to plug in. That's the battery side. Um, if you want more information on that, I've found a, a website actually which explains this in really great detail with, with, some, with some nice tables and stuff. And I'll put a link to their website in the description below this video. Now I'll talk about how we're gonna connect the batteries up a little bit later on. So right now I'm gonna get all the equipment mounted up, have a chat through what it is, what it does in comparison to my drawing and how it all sort of works. And then uh, we'll see how far we get before this video gets really boring. So let's rock and roll. being me I, uh, I started connecting it up as i was mounting it so it got a bit carried away but i'll i'll run you through what i've got mounted and again why i've got that particular piece of equipment and then i'll probably get it all wired and then i'll talk you through how i've wired it in a bit more detail so we'll take a look at what i've got on the wall shall we right so here is my fancy fancy drawing so my actual what i've actually put in is a little bit different to this but we'll go through it we'll start with we'll start from the bottom work our way up now the battery bank my four batteries there's four different charging systems for those batteries like there is with all of these van builds that you see these days there's one is this split charge relay setup which you can see here it literally links from my um, van starting battery through the fuse. There's your fuse, your 100 amp fuse. It's obviously off at the minute because I'm nearly connected them to the batteries. I don't want any voltage passing through either way or shorting out anywhere, mess my batteries up. And then it goes through this Durite uh, 140 amp split charge relay. There she is, as shown. And then it um, through another fuse. And then on here, it kind of shows that it goes to these blocks. Now these blocks are actually up here but i kind of thought it might actually be easier just to go straight onto the uh, the battery block for a number of reasons that we'll come to in a bit so yeah it then goes through here up here and then it will wire straight onto this first battery the uh the lead is there it just needs to go onto that terminal there which we'll do later on so there's a split charge relay now, if i don't know what a split charge relay does it basically means that when your starting battery is full the split charge relay uh, picks up the voltage difference and effectively transfers the alternator current onto the uh, my leisure battery so then it charges those while i'm driving which is great so this is 25 mil uh single core tri-rated flex it goes through a 100 amp um, fuse the 100 amp fuse is to protect the cable from any the cable and the equipment from any overcurrents coming from both the battery, the starter battery, and the leisure batteries. So it's there for protection. And then goes through my voltage sensitive relay. As I, as I said before, it just regulates on voltage. So if the voltage this side, if the voltage from the van starting battery is low, as I said, it diverts the current from the alternator up to the leisure batteries. Now, then we have another fuse. So this fuse is kind of to protect it both ways. So it protects it from the leisure batteries back to the starting battery. So that is the sort of split charge relay setup that's a little bit independent. There's also a neutral, or neutral, I'm speaking in mains. There's a negative that also goes from the battery over, it says in the block again, but it actually goes from, the, from the, uh, the negative to the negative of this battery. It's actually here, just laying there at the moment. So that's that bad boy. This is all common in these blocks, anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much where you connect it. But what I've actually, how I've actually wired this, how I'm going to wire it, is I'm going to have the charge inside 
coming into one side of the battery and then we have the distribution side coming out of the top of the batteries and then they will be connected in parallel to to give me 12 volts and 480 amp hours which again when i wire it later on we'll go we'll cover it in more detail the next charging setup is this bad boy which is my battery charger my mains battery charger here she is genius noco 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 whatever this is actually designed for a 400 amp hour system because so i actually only bought two batteries and if you saw my previous drawing so i had a, I had a 240 amp hour system so all it will still charge those batteries it'll just do it longer than the four hours that it takes in there so it probably charge those batteries from dead to in about five hours which is which is pretty good it's also got a boost setting but obviously you never use that on these uh, leisure battery setup now that's literally plugged into this 240 volt socket we've been through how to wire sockets in the last vlog and that is just flexed straight to this distribution board which will have my 240 volt mains hook up into a main circuit breaker again i'll cover it in more details when we actually wire it and then this just got um 16 amp distribution circuits so one will be is this socket which I've just said, and this one, because I have to change over switch, we'll get, we'll get to in a second. And then there'll be another one which will supply my um, Truma 4E combi boiler. There's a 240 volt supply in there, so that's what the extra one's for. What's next? So that's my main charger. We know all about that. Next comes my solar. So here is the solar. We know I've got those two bad boys on the roof. We've got this MPPT solar charge controller. The company I used was Bimble Solar, and they uh, they recommended it. They actually sold it as a kit, so I'm going with it. As I haven't wired this yet, obviously. So, sun shines on the solar panels, it goes through. So I've connected these, so I've connected these in series, which means, this is, this is the bit where I think the charge controller does all the hard work. So, which actually only gives me 265 watts in total, but then doubles the voltage, but somehow, apparently, according to Bimble Solar, the solar charge controller does the legwork and then converts it somehow so i then get a 12 volt output and then 500 odd watts of uh, of charge current so apparently that'll do it we'll find out when we get it on and then it goes through my circuit breaker and then it goes straight onto the batteries that's what that's for i haven't got that wired yet as you can see it's just sat there that will be my circuit breaker um i haven't got it yet it's actually i've only got a single pole one at the minute but I'm, i've got double pole one on order so that'll come through here from the roof, through the copex, out the side here, up into the bottom of there, and then literally in, out. Again, we'll come to that a bit later on, how to wire all that. Into my circuit breaker, and then it'll go down straight onto the ba this battery again. So we'll call that the charge battery. So that's my three charge, my solar, my 240, and my split charge relay setup. So that basically describes the bottom half or say that bit and that and the split charge relay. It kind of describes the, the bottom half of that setup. We've spoke briefly about the 240 side. That's basically a distribution board. Again, I'll come to it in more detail when I've got it wired up. Then we move on to um, the inverter. Now, I was gonna go for a massive inverter and then I thought I don't really want a massive inverter because they're really expensive and I wanted to limit how much 240 I actually use. This was just, off Amazon, I'll put a link to all this stuff in the description below the uh, the vlog. I went for this because the review said that it was one of the best. It's always try and go for a pure sine wave inverter. They uh, they did they manage the output voltage a lot better than the other ones. So how this works? Obviously, this is my 240 volt output. That just goes through a changeover switch, which will be like that. And what it will basically do, oh, there's another supply from the 240 volt distribution side. So on normal running, when I'm off grid it'll run, they'll, the inverter will give an output of 240, I'll have it on, I don't know, on number one. One will then supply me 240 volts out to my, my sockets, which the actual cables here, I haven't wired it in yet. And then if I'm, if I'm connected to a mains hookup, then, or a campsite, then I can flick it over to number two, and that'll basically disconnect the inverter, to obviously save the life of that, and it'll rig it straight onto 240 volts. So actually, this will give me about three or four amps per socket. Oh, sorry, I probably only give me about six amps in total, actually. Whereas this will then give me the, the full 16 amp supply. So I'll have a bit more current to play with. So if you want to plug anything heavy in, hair dryer, hair straighteners, if you have a woman with you, I say that, that was a bit sexist, but we all were, uh, if you have anyone with you, we should say, yeah, I can switch it over. It just saves the life of this equipment. So that's why I put the changeover switch in. 
So that's the, the 240 volt setup. Then we move up top to the sort of 12 volt setup. Now, this is my 12 volt fuse box, my distribution, which will do all my lights, my fridge, my water pump, all that bits and pieces. There's a, a negative and a positive. Now, they were just kept onto these two blocks, which were negative and positive. And then this here is my lighting junction box. So remember I said before, all my cables come from or come down to the back of here to a common point and then my switch wires are hanging down here they literally come through there from that cupboard they will literally wire into this junction box and then i'll do some joints some special bits and pieces which we'll come to later on and then i'll just take the supplies uh off the fuse box through here so that's why that's all together if that makes sense to any of you this here will be my main fuse oh, i didn't show that junction box actually in this drawing which was a bit of an afterthought where are we this 150 fuse i've put here i've put there to protect the batteries from any overcurrent it protects the system and it protects the batteries from any faults so if anything happens here it takes the fuse out so i'll put that there so there'll be a i'll tap off the batteries up here and then we'll loop down through the fuse and then into these negative and positive blocks There'll be no fuse on the negative, it'll just bosh straight into there. And then same with the inverter, the inverter will just wire from here over into these blocks. Now I don't know how much detail to go into this until I get it wired really, but that is my setup. Most of this stuff come off Amazon. This come from Bimble Solar. That was Amazon. That was my local wholesaler because one of Amazon didn't turn up. Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Everything's Amazon. So Amazon van build. I still haven't got my light switch from the, my local wholesaler, which is a pain in the backside. So I'll probably do that one in the next vlog. I'll get this wired and then we'll, uh, we'll bosh through it, shall we? I thought I'd have a little run through how I'm connecting my batteries up because you can mess this up and if you do mess up it can be quite dangerous so i thought i'd have a talk through how to do it properly i'm connecting my battery system up because obviously i've got multiple batteries in parallel what that means is the 12 volt battery is kept it all together in parallel will give me a 12 volt output still but with every battery connection i'll be increasing the amp hours so i'll be 120 240 360 480 amp hours but keeping it 12 volts when it gets to my terminals here my final connection terminals if i was connecting them in series I would be increasing the voltage with every battery connection, but keeping the same amp hours. So we don't want to be doing that. Now, when connecting your batteries, you want to be extremely careful not to be shorting out any of the battery terminals. You do not want to be shorting out between the batteries itself. And once you start getting them connected, you do not want to be shorting out any of the, the positive or negative terminals across the whole system. Because remember, as, you, as you're connecting each battery, you're effectively increasing the potential fault current. And if you short them out, you risk explosion, you risk expiring bloody battery acid everywhere. It can be really, really dangerous. So be very, very careful. As I've been connecting up my system back here and my solar system, which I'll talk through in a second, I've been checking the, the polarity uh, all the way through. So before I do any connection, I've been testing every single cable. Now, I don't want to teach you how to suck eggs, but if you test your battery, if you get your multimeter, Test your battery. If you go on the positive and negative, you'll get a positive value. So 14 volts, positive 14 volts. If the polarity was incorrect, let's say the negative probe onto the positive terminal and vice versa, I'll be getting a minus voltage, so minus 14 volts. So that way I would know that it's connected incorrectly. So you want to be checking it all the way through. So how I'm connecting the batteries is the links. For the links, I'm using this 50 mil single core tri-rated flex it's effectively welding cable it's nice and big the reason i've gone for 50 mil is because my main protection fuse is 150 amps and that needs to be able to protect my cable now, this cable is rated to 166 amps so that what that means is the fuse will give way under fault conditions before the cable destroys itself and destroys the batteries so that's why we've gone for a nice big juicy cable now, how I'm connected into these battery terminals is with, with these lovely battery terminal connectors that I got off Amazon. Um, someone recommended me. Actually, Neil for the Urban Explorer recommended these to me, and they are they are lovely to be honest. So they're marked positive and negative, so you can't get that wrong. There's a little bit of red heat shrink on the end just to mark each one, and I'll do that. I'm going to make all the legs up in a second, and we'll go through that. Now, when connecting any battery terminals up, 
BJ and Van top tip, Vaseline. Everyone takes a mickey out of me for carrying Vaseline in my pocket, but in my previous life as a project engineer, this saved us so many times. So it's an awesome conductive grease. It's basically, we all know it's petroleum jelly. So what you want to do is smear a load of this around your battery terminals. It's a lovely conductive grease. It just prolongs the life of it. It lowers the terminal resistance. So it's just a good idea. If you can smear this on your battery terminals, I've done it on these terminals as well, then do so. I'll probably chuck a bit in these as well because the more grease, the better. We're effectively going to connect up this 50 mil between the two positives and then we'll loop across all the positives and then we'll go around onto this fuse and we'll do the same with the negatives onto this terminal block. So we'll get that done and then uh, we'll have a chat through once I've done it. So the battery is all connected. The sort of the power supply side is all pretty much done. I'll just take you through what I've done. Okay, battery is all connected. As we mentioned earlier, all the positives are linked together. All the terminals nice and greased up. Uh, so that battery to that battery to that battery over to this battery, and then it links off these terminals down onto my blocks here. Which so all my outgoing circuits, if you like, so. My fuse board, my inverter, um, whatever else is going on here, will all come out of there. So just to prove to you, there we go, look what we got. 14 volts DC, lovely job. So with all the batteries connected together in parallel, we've got 14 volts DC, which means I've got my full 480 amp hours of power in those bad, bad boys and still got 12 volts. 14 volts is max, which means they're actually 100% charged. You look at my, in, if I look at my Australia charge controller, if you can see it, they're 100% charged. So that's great. Well, else to talk about? I will tidy all this up a little bit later on. I've left my split charge relay off because this is an earth and I need to connect that as yet. I need to earth this whole system. I'll bolt a, a earth terminal on the side of the metalwork here and then I'll link it into the neutral block. Oh, well, you keep saying that. Into the, the negative block here and then that will tie all the earth systems in together solar is actually running quite nicely this is what the solar charger is quite good at so it's pulling in if you can see it 65.7 volts but it's converting it to 14 to an output charge of 14 volts beautiful so it's 65 odd volts going in 14 volts going out my batteries are fully charged as you can see on there well, it's 20 to 100 charge, so that's beautiful. Um, and what we bring in at the minute is quite sunny. Look at that 311 watts, 23, yeah, 300 odd watts of energy is coming in from my solar panels, which is great. So they are being charged lovely at the moment. So, yeah, there she is. That's at least I've got power now. Now I can do all my outgoing circuits. So, beautiful. I think this vlog is probably already at like 20 something minutes. So I'll probably call it a day there on this video. We've covered quite a lot. The next video, I will do the sort of distribution circuit. So we'll do the inverter, the 12 volt stuff, the lighting, hopefully my switch has come so I can get that in and the USB sockets. If there's anything that I haven't covered that you think that you want me to cover in more detail, then leave a comment or hit me up on Instagram, the B Jam Van Instagram uh, page, and I'll try and help out where I can. I mean, I don't know everything. Obviously, no one knows everything, but I know enough to get by. So, like I said, this is probably the part of the van build I'm most confident with because the rest of it has been a bit of a mess. Like, I had a bloody leak, which I've now got to sort out. So, thanks again for watching. If you liked my video, then please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber already, then why not? Then hit the subscribe button because uh, I do these videos each week. There'll be three or four parts of the electrical work and then we'll move on to, I don't know, probably the water or the gas. Like I say, I'm I'm not an expert at any of this. I'm just having a go. But if I can help people on their own van builds or give them an idea what to do, then great. Because I've made my fair share of mistakes. So I'm actually starting another playlist, um, which is van build mistakes, which they'll, uh, there'll be a few videos in there over the next few weeks. So yeah, thanks again for watching. I'll uh, catch you the next one.